Our house was built in 1880, so we're actually 135 years old. We're 15 years older than the Hotel Dell. We're also site of, or I should say the site of San Diego's first petting zoo. We bought the house originally as a hope to bring it back to the community. So it is a fixer upper. It's got quirks. It's been touted as being a miniature Winchester mystery house. We have a stairway to nowhere. We have a window to nowhere. Um, it's haunted. It's too old not to be. People experience hot spots. Um, ghost cats are seen. They're felt. Um, I've seen uh, quite a few things. I remember I would, I used to tell Paul, I said, you know, I said, um, there's a little girl that lives here and she watches us from the, from the top of the stairs. And I don't know, Paul doesn't tend to feel things like that. And I think he was kind of like, yeah, whatever, crazy wife, move on. And it wasn't until we talked to the neighbor next door she had just moved into that pretty new house next door, which is only as old as we've been there pretty much. And she says, uh, I almost didn't move in. I said, oh. She says, yes, uh, the former tenant told me the house and the properties, these three properties are haunted. We said, oh, really? And she says, um, yes. He says that he was upstairs doing some work and he lost his hammer. And when he turned around, there was a little girl holding the hammer. And she said, it freaked me out. So I went to the landlord and I said, I'm not moving in. And he went to the tenant that lived in your house and he told him, you can't scare my tenant like that. She says, so the guy came over and he told me he made it up. And I remember Paul and I got into the car and as we were driving away, I looked at him and I said, he didn't make that up. And Paul said, no, he didn't. You've been telling me there's a little girl in the house. Francie, when she came, she said she felt it. And we do, we get people, if you're sensitive, you know. Um, we had a good friend of mine from high school came and she brought a Stradivarius, a violin older than our country, into that house. And I was lit up like a Christmas tree. Just the pins and needles the, that you get were just running up my back, just trails and trails and trails, almost like you could hear someone just say, I'm here, I'm here, and I'm upset. And I remember as she's going through, it got so bad, I stopped in the doorway of the kitchen, and she went on with Paul, uh, my husband, and I stopped, and I closed my eyes, and I just kind of took a deep breath, and I said, I understand you're concerned. She's just here to see the house. She's very excited. She's good people. She doesn't mean any harm. And after I said that, it very slowly it took a little bit, but it very slowly just faded away. And I don't know, I honestly think that it was the violin. We lost a, a truck key when we first moved in. And uh, it was, for a truck that got stolen and the insurance wanted the keys and we couldn't find them, we couldn't find them, we couldn't find them. And long after the case was settled, uh, the claim was settled, I remember because the, the key was originally downstairs, it never came upstairs into the bedroom. And I remember I went upstairs and I took a shower in the upstairs bathroom and when I came out, the key was just standing, sitting there like it never left. And I remember I picked up the key and I just looked and I said, thank you. You know, because there's not much you can do. So on occasion, she likes to f fiddle with things. So uh, I had gone to bed and my husband was uh, fiddling about in the kitchen. And when I woke up, I saw a man in my closet and I screamed because it freaked me out because there's some strange man in my closet and most women would probably freak out and probably so would a lot of men. And I remember I uh, looked and I saw the feet and uh, kind of panned up and I saw the, the clothes and the tie. It was really the tie that said Victorian because it was uh, like a fabric, like a bolo kind of style and his hands because I saw the hands. And uh, 
I could tell through the hands that he wasn't more than 30, that he was still pretty, pretty young. Uh, and, and 30 might have, you know, it's just a guess. Um, and then he was gone, I never saw his face. And my husband ran in and he says, are you okay, what's wrong, are you okay? And I stopped and I, I paused and I got very calm and I said, oh, it's okay honey, it's just a man in the closet. He doesn't mean us any harm, it's okay. And I remember after this incident, the next day, my husband got up and he went to work and I stopped in the doorway after I closed the door for him and he kissed him goodbye and I stopped in the doorway and I said, I understand that you are very curious about us and I want to let you know we don't mean any harm, we're just here to do good. We want to bring the house back. And I said, but please don't do that anymore. It makes me very upset to see strange men in my closet. Um, I have since seen him in a glimpse only once, and I think it was kind of a slip up, but I haven't seen him since. <laughs>